NAM 2012, another NAM for you guys. Uh, we're here at the Line 6 booth. I know you guys are all familiar with uh, playing uh, Line 6 amps on stage, probably maybe even varied into a Variax guitar. Uh, they're awesome uh, floor pedals. But it uh, looks like today they're coming into the PA world and mixing world here uh, for complete your live performance out. So I'm here with uh, Steve, we're going to talk a little bit about what they got new here. Well, uh, amongst, amongst other things, so the PA system is absolutely new. Um, this is our first, our first adventure into the PA world, and, uh, and being Line 6, we can't leave well enough alone. So I uh, thought we'd try to add a little value to what's out there. We start with the speakers. Uh, this is our L3, the stage source L3T for the tower, and then um, a sub that goes with it. And um, right off the bat, one of the things that um, it's, it's not particularly unique that we have a mixer, but we have a two-channel mixer. We have sweepable mids on it. But what is a, starts to become a little more line six-ish is that um, we incorporate a little bit of modeling and a little bit of intelligence into the DSP of the speaker so that it knows what mode it's in and, uh, and adapts itself accordingly. So for instance, if we plug in an acoustic guitar and running off the piezo bridge pickup, which is typically not the most acoustic sounding thing in the universe, we actually have a built-in model right here, that um, model that will compensate for a typical piezo pickup and give it a little bit more, a little bit more acoustic you know, feel to it. So, and, you, and you can adjust that to taste, more or less. Um, we have some reverb, we have a vocal doubler, we have the sweepable mids, we have individual gain, we have input for a, um, for an iPod or an iPhone or that type of thing. Um, so there's two, cha two completely separate channels. Um, and those are the input side. On the, on the output, um, well, we also have additional input here. This is uh, basically the line in and, and um, a stereo input line in, right? Um, so we have the outputs. Um, so we can, we can basically daisy chain from one to the other in an analog domain, but we also have line six link. And you might remember Line 6 Link from the HD pods, right? right? Um, it's part of the, the, um, the uh, I can't remember the name, <laughs> the, dream, the dream setup, the, right. the dream rig, yeah. right? The, uh, it's basically the same Line 6 Link that ties the Variax to the, to the pod, to the, to the DT25 and DT50. Um, but here what we're doing is, this is still an eight channel digital uh, two wire system basically that we can use to connect from speaker to speaker or from speaker from from the M20D mixer out to the speakers or, or you know daisy chain through the speakers so um, so we have a digital an actual digital connection um, out to each one of these guys all right um, at the same time we've got um, um, the line six link also passes intelligence back and forth. So what happens is this guy is packed with DSP. And there's a couple of things that DSP does. One is it, it models, it sets up the modeling of the, the voicing of the speakers such that if you're using it for guitar as a full range and, and you plug your HD 500 into it, it knows you have an HD 500 plugged into it and, and treats it as a full range speaker for a guitar player. If you plug an acoustic guitar into it, we talked about the modeling for the acoustic. If you plug the PA into it, it goes into full range. And if you have the subs in, it knows that the subs are there in a crossovers move slightly so to give you a better you know take more advantage of what the sub can do for you and give you a little more power to work with up here so not as much tweaking on your own as right as far right as it right, can sense right what you're doing right it knows what you, if you're using line six equipment it knows about that line six equipment but it also extends your digital signal processing right if we take the the, the mixer and we plug its output into here um, when we go to the output EQ adjustment on here instead of using this guy's DSP to do it it's acting as a controller for the DSP that's out in the speaker right Okay, um, so uh, you know, so that's kind of nice. You're just extending all the. It, it's you're making good use of all the DS. So if you bought one of these and it's got a bunch of DSP in it, just because you have one of these, it doesn't. It's not redundant. It's it lets you. It moves the D, the horsepower for doing the house stuff out here and leaves more DSP power back here to do other things with. Right. Excellent. Okay. So moving on to the M20D, um, <clears throat> this is a, a a 20 input six output mixer. Um, it's got, um, it's, it's both a live mixer, it's got record capability, it's, it can record internally to, uh, to a S standard SD card. So you pop your SD card in here and you're recording without a computer and with, without an external recorder and, and so on. That's a nice little safety thing. Um, it's also got I.O. Um, 
through the USB, it'll connect as a, as a core audio device to a Mac or to as a standard audio I.O. for a PC. So you can do all your standard audio apps, no Line 6 necessarily apps, um, can use this as an audio interface. Um, so you can take it home and use it in your, your uh, studio. band studio as yep. well as taking it out. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So here's where it starts to get a little funny because it, it's got a bunch of knobs that don't look like they do very much and it's got a couple of switches and got this big panel. Um, so somebody walks up to this thing and um, takes, their, takes their mic cable and plugs it in and bam, the thing comes to life, right? Now you say, I've just a cable, right? All right, so he placed a microphone on the stage. It activated the input and it's, and it's waiting for an output. So I'm, gonna put, I'm gonna give it an output by plugging a cable into the output. So it now knows that that output is live. That's routed, okay? That's all you have to do to route your, your basic signal. So you're the singer songwriter comes in, you wanna do a quick setup, you plug a couple mics in and guitar. All right, so I pick this guy and I wanna do something with it. I say it's a vocal mic, okay? So it puts a vocalist up there. And I can go and tweak that guy. And, um, and rather than get into a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo, I'm just the guitar player or the keyboard player or something. I don't remember exactly if you do this with threshold and that with attack, does it sound punchy or, you know, or if I just want more punch, I take my finger towards punch, <laughs> mm. you know, or if I want to have it be tighter, I go towards control. If I want a nice little pumpy, really what I do is I, I, I listen with my ears and I don't look at this thing and I move my finger around until it sounds the way I want it to sound, right? And right. then... Okay, so that's cool. But then, um, you know, later on you say, what, how did I get that sound? What, what's, what's the magic behind that? And you can just push the, um, the little college guy here and you'll get into expert mode and you'll actually get to see all the, suddenly down here you can see the purpose of these guys starts to change, right? It adapts to like, so if I go to the compressor, we can see, and they're all color coordinated to what you see on the screen, right? So I can tweak I could cheat my ratio. So if it's faster for me to just go, you know, I've done this for a million years. I'm just going to, you know, adjust it up the way I like I know it. The settings, yeah, I want. Yeah. And then, and, and that can be my starting point and I can go back to this mode and uh, there it is. Right. I assume you can save these as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yep. So you can save patches, you can save scenes, <clears throat> you can save setups. So you could have your, like your, your wedding band A and wedding band B set up. You could have your recording set up and your live set up. And you just do recall from the, from the setups. Um, effects, we have a, a whole number of effects that can be put in and they can be tweaked. Um, so change that to hall. I can go to uh, advanced mode on that. Oh, I'm back over there, okay. Well, you can go into delay. This is kind of cool. It's got the delay on here. It's, I can actually see visually where that delay time is at. And, and as I adjust, you know, the, the, so again, it's the same idea. Listen with your ears. Now, the other thing that's kind of interesting is this whole interface is duplicated out on any number of iPads, right? Oh, really? Yeah, so you take your iPad and you go out into the audience and you could do it out from there or you could do it from a, leave this thing over on the side of the stage and just and have your iPad on your, mounted on your mic stand and, and be adjusting from there and so on. So now this is, <clears throat> so it's got a wireless so that you can actually mirror it to an iPad? Yeah, what, what, what we do, you can uh, plug in a third party like a Linksys oh, uh, okay. into, into the USB here right. and then it actually has a private, so you don't need a computer in addition to the iPad to communicate oh, with this, okay? Yeah. So it's not built in, you're not paying extra for the wireless, set. But, but you can add a, you can just add basically a wireless dongle to it. And we have a couple that we recommend, you know, to help people get started and so on. Um, the other cool thing, if we go into, back into setup, um, we're going to monitor mode. I haven't added a monitor. Let's put a monitor in. Uh, I gotta fix this guy. Let's put a monitor on it. Okay, so now I have a monitor. This guy showed up and I could put him here. And I'm gonna go back to set up. I'm gonna add a couple of instruments. I'm gonna add a bass and I'm gonna add an acoustic guitar, all right? And um, so now, if, um, if I go into back to monitor, I've got all those instruments and I've got that monitor. So I'm working on, I select this monitor that I'm working on and each one of these guys is mapped up there. So if I wanna put some more vocal in that monitor, I wanna put some bass in that monitor, I wanna put the acoustic guitar in that monitor, you can see it's, it's showing me. So I've had multiple monitors up on here, you would be able to see visually which one it is you're feeding, right? So, okay. Um, 
There's a lot of things we can do with this. But, you know, <laughs> and when you were say, saying that you could uh, uh, save scenes and stuff like that, so like if you're playing like you know five different venues fairly frequently and stuff like that, you can save what what works the best in each one of those venues out, so that you just yep, literally absolutely. walk in and bang right. and say, "I'm right. playing this club. Exactly I'm playing right. this place." Exactly right. Wow, that's amazing. Exactly right. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, simple as, it's as simple as you know we're managing setups and. We could just save that setup that we just did and give it a name. Okay, and I assume you can like save that stuff off to a computer. You could save it yeah, probably it to your SD. Yeah, it'll go yeah. onto the SD card and so on. Yeah, as well. Uh, 2012 Line Six, new stuff. Gotta get it. Check it out.